All right, here we go. Welcome everybody. We are doing another live episode of the Climate Action Homes podcast. I'm coming to you from a lodge room at Snow Mountain Ranch in Granby, Colorado. So excited, get to go cross country skiing tomorrow morning. Um, and I'm really happy to be joined by Katrina Karcheski of Grateful Garden. Hi, Katrina. Hi, everybody. Hi, Joan. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, this is so awesome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so we are going to be talking with Katrina. Uh, before we do that, I wanted to give you a quick little intro. So the Climate Action Homes podcast um, is all about how you can make a positive impact when buying, selling, investing, and living in your homes. And um, my name is Joan Gregerson. I'm a real estate agent with Your Castle Realty in Denver. And yeah, that's what we're doing here is creating this community of people who can help you make a positive impact. And um, if you want to join us after the podcast for our, our networking, just go over to climateactionhomes.com, sign up for the newsletter, and you'll get the Zoom link so you can hang out with us afterwards too. All right, so I'm so excited to, to introduce you to Katrina. Uh, Katrina is the owner of the Grateful Garden. Um, and what I really am so excited about is that, you know, if you live in other parts of the country, like if you're in Florida or something, you're maybe always trying to get things to stop from overgrowing and like pull them back in. But in Colorado, we are not in the easiest climate to grow food. Um, my mom was just always in search of growing a great tomato, which she didn't really have any gardening skills to speak of. So there's a lot of disappointment. Um, and I think that's pretty common. And so what's exciting about what Katrina is going to be talking about is that her business is is being a gardening coach and a gardener coach. And, and so this idea that if, if you don't know how to do something, it's not your fault and that there is somebody that can help you. Just like, you know, if you're trying to lose weight or run a marathon, you probably would have somebody helping you um, to order, in order to succeed. So I'm so excited about that. And um, with that, Katrina, I would love to know how did you get into this idea of having a business to do this garden coaching that that you're doing now. Yeah. Um, well, you know, thank you so much, Joan, for having me. You know, I do want to just reiterate the fact that Grateful Garden LLC, we grow gardeners, not just gardens, right? So um, how did I get into doing this? I personally love a good origin story. And I like to say it's never just one thing. So I grew up in the garden state um, with a garden and chickens and my pop-up had a farm and I'd been gardening, you know, there as a kid, oh, the garden state, by the way, is New Jersey. And I'd been gardening, you know, as a child, I lost touch with it when I went into college. And when I moved to Colorado, I actually started gardening again when I bought my first home in 2011. So I've been gardening and raised beds in Colorado since then. And you know, for me, gardening, it's just, it's such a really important thing to literally put down roots, right? Um, you're literally putting roots down into where you live. And I've been helping people like solicited or not garden ever since I started gardening. So after like a few years, I discovered, I didn't feel like I really arrived as a gardener, right? I didn't, I didn't consider myself one, even though I was gardening. It actually took me until I started saving my own seeds to feel like, oh, like now I'm a gardener. I've done this. And so in 2016, I actually created a seed company, uh, quotation marks, because uh, I ended up, you know, giving more away than I did selling them. So after growing um, and something sometimes takes two years until they seed harvesting, designing, doing all the labels, weighing all the seeds, packaging them, and then putting them up for sale. I found out that yes, like people want seeds. They do. Yes, this is great. And yes, they do not know what to do with them next. Um, so it was really those follow-up conversations that I loved more. 
The other thing that happened during my gardening journey was navigating just this tons of information that while some of it on the internet is transferable, if it wasn't specific to Colorado, it often led me to this frustration, this feeling of failure. Uh, there's so many times I say to myself now, if I knew then what I know now, I would have been so much further along. Um, you know, I would have incorporated things like perennial fruits that actually work here and harvesting them that much sooner. Uh, there's this beautiful adage too, Joan, that uh, three for the roots, four for the fruits. And that's really kind of how any good idea, I think, kind of happens. It takes three years for those roots to really grow before you see the fruits of your labor. So uh, a couple of years later, you know, in 2021, I decided to just make this all into this business, you know, um, designing, installing, coaching, growing food and pollinator plants and doing it in your space. So I became the person that I wished I had when I had started my journey. That's always the best thing, right? I think that thing of kind of taking care of the younger you. Yeah. Um, and and there's always, I think there's always an element of kind of reparenting almost, you know, where you're going back to that younger person, that person that's just starting out and saying, hey, this is what this is what I wish I'd known. I mean, that's what I'm doing too with this whole, everything that I've been doing with Green Team Academy and writing books is I'm 61 years old. And I I know that when I started, like fresh out of college, age 21, I never thought we would be in a world where people didn't prioritize taking care of the environment. So I've seen that when we don't put it front and center, it doesn't happen. So it's like, I know that now. And this is like such a, a, an important thing for me to say and to reiterate. Um, and so like for you to, to, to be able, I'd never heard that adage. That's really cool. The, so three years. Three for the roots, four for the fruits. Yeah. Okay. If there's not already a children's book or um, a rap, that would be a good one. Um, <laughs> we're we're going to work on it right after yes. this. I like that. Yeah. And I was just thinking too, that when I did my intro, I forgot to mention some of the upcoming events. So, oh, yeah. so stay tuned towards the end. I'm going to tell you what our upcoming podcasts are. And we also to tell you the dates of some of the upcoming seed saving and seed starting workshops. So we're going to have all of that as well as in the show notes. Um, so all kinds of good stuff. Um, so so Katrina, uh, I'm trying to remember what our next question is as I like got distracted here. You're fine. You know, I, <laughs> I kind of wanted to point out too, you know, one of the things I love to tell everyone why a garden coach is important is because what if I were to tell you that it's most likely like not your fault that your plants die? You know, yes, that, I think people would feel a lot better, especially in Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what makes me different than like a landscaper or than like someone just like throwing information out on the internet. Right. I'm really here to coach you through, you know, all these just negative self-talk that we give ourselves about this thing. And, you know, while placement and uh, procedures like watering are a big part of it, and we take care of all that for you, um, buying plants at big box stores uh, that's really who's at fault. You know, the garden industry is meant to um, kind of be like the toy industry where they're expecting it to break. They're expecting it not to work mm. for you to have to buy more for you to find uh, new supplements or new products that feel like science experiments. They stock the stores with almost the same contents nationwide with little regard to our unique environment. So, you know, I would love to talk about some of that climate impact that the industry has, you know, where are yeah. we trading our money for some of that? Yeah, well, and I think let's let's hone in on the the idea of um, why why raised bed kitchen gardens and and, you know, so so you talked about this idea that people are frustrated. They've tried growing food, especially in Colorado and failed and feel like it's their problem, their fault. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the kind of person that you're working with that wants to do something. So why of all the different things did you kind of hone, on, hone in on this idea of the raised bed kitchen gardens? You know, that's really 
the one thing that we can do to make sure that we have control. Um, it's, you know, raised bed kitchen gardening. There's so many reasons why doing raised beds are benefits. Um, having control over your soil is really a big one. Uh, Colorado has already so many challenges to growing our own food and clay is only one of them. Uh, we basically live in a desert. Um, it makes it even more important to have a contained garden where watering doesn't run off uh, with the nutrients. Um, raised beds are really great because, you know, most of us have, you know, someone running around like a dog or a child that, you know, we want to keep out of the garden and have that space for it. But they also extend our season. They make it longer. And our season here, while we have some gorgeous winter days, it's a really short growing season. So raised beds are more comfortable for tending your garden. They're aesthetically pleasing. They add another outdoor living space. Okay, that's a lot of reasons. And I could probably go on, but you know, uh, the kitchen garden in raised beds is something that I'm really truly passionate about. And while you can do other methods and you can try other things, the systems that we have and that we have created and that we have, you know, used over, you know, decades and across, you know, um, all places, they really work. And it really helps take out all that guesswork. And it, it seems like, I know one of the things that we talk about, like in the Climate Action Challenge book is like, it's great to have a big goal of transforming like your whole city, the whole world, you know, but if, if you can start with a pilot project and show, like demonstrate some results, demonstrate some success, learn some things really quickly uh, and, and call it a pilot project, then you, you're okay with what you fail at and you're, you're expecting to learn really quickly. And so I feel like that's kind of what the, the raised bed kitchen garden is because you're going to get some food, some herbs, some something, and you're going to figure out in your soil and your, you know, whatever your habits are and yeah. dogs, kids, like all, of it. all that, what's, what's actually going to work. Uh, yeah. for you. And you and figure it, it out really quickly with a, rather than trying to do the entire landscape. Perfect. Yeah. Thing, so. And if you feel like you would not be a good gardener because of your past experience with plants, you know, we encourage you to give it another go with us, um, with our methods, and we'll set you up for success. You will be a gardener. You will be confident and grateful um, and a gardener within just a few weeks of our consultation. So we're really making it so that you have that win right away, right? You have that ability to once everything's planted and it's all been done and all of it's there for you, you know, within a couple of weeks, you can pick your first piece of, you know, greens or lettuce out of there and eat something from your garden way sooner than you would have on your own. I think one of the things you said too, it kind of reminds me of, you know, like mindfulness and, um, and we were talking about that with Linnea Bjorkman too, you know, the just kind of getting more in the moment and finding the joy and the peace right from the beginning and not, yeah. you know, not putting so many expectations on yourself, but just finding some joy in, in the fact that you are going to try growing your food again and that you, you are getting someone to help you and you're, you know, these doors are opening for you. Yeah. I, I mean, I just, I can't even think of anything better for me to be doing the amount of joy it brings me to, you know, I talk about the connection, right? There's so much mindfulness. There's so much connection where when you're literally touching the piece of earth that you are inhabiting and making something come out of it, when you're literally grounding yourself and connecting to, you know, that little spot in your little yard or big yard, you know, but we do a lot in small, you know, suburban gardens. Not only are you connected to your actual latitude and longitude, but then you start to really be mindful of the seasons of what grows. And then you start to, uh, whether your neighbors, you know, are ready for it or not, share with them, you know, because you have abundance. And so you then you're connected to your community and you're just connected to this part of yourself that is ancient, you know, we, yeah. we need to know how to grow food to live. You know, um, it's only until recently that, you know, we could have food out of season from all over the world, um, you know. And so that 
that mindfulness, that connection, that slowing down. So many people tell me that, you know, gardening is their therapy, um, slowing down and watching something bloom, watching the life cycle of it and, and being the creator of all of that. It's just so powerful. Yeah, I think so too. Like the creativity, creativity and transformation, that's, that's the exciting part of, you know, when we can do something that's on that level, it's, it's a completely different level. And what you said too, it reminds me, I was reading um, some writings and I can't remember who it was, but they, it was a Native American anthology. So I don't remember which person wrote this, but they were saying what they were seeing was that the people that were moving here from Europe and then living, they didn't know the place. Right. They didn't, they didn't, you know, they kind of kept their mentality from where they were and they tried to apply it here. And so I think what you're saying is like, if you, you're like, no, I'm here. This is my home. That's like grounding and, and seeing what grows and under, kind of starting to live more in harmony with that is, is so powerful. And I, I think that thing of being disconnected from nature is a lot of the root of these bigger issues that we are facing. So that's a great place to start. So, so could you give me an example? I know you were talking about um, when we were chatting earlier about just uh, doing some consultations recently. And could you give us a couple examples of some of the people that you work with? Like what are things that people are coming to you with and what kinds of things are you actually doing um, that, that you feel like are, are working? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I did. I actually had a couple consultations this past weekend and, um, you know, they reached out to me because they were interested in setting up their garden successfully. And, you know, what's really beautiful and amazing to me is that it, it comes from everywhere. This desire to grow your own food, um, you know, you can't really pinpoint who that's going to be. Right. And when I get to go into these yards of these beautiful families and, um, really just help dream out their garden with them. You know, they have all of these skills, um, you know, and they've done all this awesome, you know, whatever landscaping, or, you know, they are really amazing at what they do, but they know that the food, it's so much more complex to figure out all those pieces of the food. So, um, the people, you know, that, uh, reach out to me, you know, it's just, who's interested in setting up your garden successfully. Um, and what that means too, is that, maybe you've tried something in the past, maybe you even already have a garden and you want to expand or figure out why it's not working. And, you know, all of that is, you know, the kind of um, people who come to me. Um, I do work with homeowners and businesses that want a done for them garden. That's just beautiful and functional. And you can just harvest and be able to call yourself a gardener within just a few weeks, um, not years after your first consultation. So, um, I do like to mention, especially since we have so much uh, new construction here, and Jen, I'm gonna, sure you're going to see a bunch of that, is that um, before you bring in a landscaper to do all the extra bushes and, you know, things that don't excite me, you, you know, really want to give your food garden the prime location and the priority in your future designs, making sure you're understanding the big picture of your space because that's what saves you from some costly decisions on where to plant those trees or put those bushes. So I work with um, current gardeners that are ready to level up their space and new design, um, you know, who want additional gardens or want their first gardens to make them real. And so this weekend I had um, two different families who, you know, um, both were excited about gardening, have tried to do it in the past, both have dreams of just, you know, homesteading or pooling, you know, a bunch of you know, things um, from their one garden or, you know, some people who just want to be able to make their own salsa um, and start small and grow with their own garden. And so I really can meet you anywhere on that journey. And for me, you know, I just I'm delighted to be a part of that. I'm delighted to spend my time, you know, dreaming the space up with you and then bringing it into reality. So what's a what's an example? I, I mean, I love that, too, about like just just making a salsa garden, for example, that that seems like a really good place. I know I've been moving around a lot. And so the couple of things that I do is one is I sprout seeds. Yeah. 
And then I have herbs because I'm, I'm house sitting one place and the next and the next. And it's like, okay, that's what I can do. Um, but what would you say, what's, what's an example, let's say, I don't know, over a year or something of, of somebody that you've, you've worked with or started to work with what's what's and i'm not sure are you working all over denver or what's what's kind of your range and what would be an example yeah oh i love this question so um it's pretty funny when um, i'm finding at least for me and maybe it's not the same for you but when you um, start to put a limitation on yourself, um, the universe has this way of just pushing you a little bit further outside of that comfort zone. So um, I had ultimately said that anyone within the 470 loop would be, you know, someone that we would go ahead and work with. And of course, a lot of my consultations have been just outside of that, right? So I always kind of find it funny that you 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 put something out there and the universe is like, well, we're going to we're going to push a little bit further for you, expand your bubble a little bit more. So basically, if you're within the 470 loop, we will do uh, consultations in person, no extra charge. If you're outside of that and want to do it in person, there is just a travel fee. And if you're outside of Colorado, you know, a lot of our um, things will still work for you. I still know where to put your garden and how to make it work because my systems will work basically countrywide. And so we do also offer virtual design or, you know, virtual coaching. Um, like I have a client who, you know, I got to do virtual coaching in her existing garden bed. And, you know, she had done an amazing job for a couple of years, you know, having this garden for her family, but then all of a sudden came up against like a roadblock and couldn't figure out like that next step and, and how to combat some of the challenges she was facing down the line, you know? And that's, to me, that's really interesting. It's not that it's just the first year or even the first install and then we're done, right? My relationship with you is gonna be through all the seasons. Um, your first installation, once you have that garden designed by me, that comes with a coaching after all of the plants are planted. So then that way I come back in, you know, a couple days to, you know, a couple weeks, depending on the season. And, and we get to go through your garden together. We get to ask and answer those questions together. We're not just leaving you. And if you feel that you still need extra support, you know, we can come back and we can be in person or virtually, you know, throughout all of the seasons. And I actually find that the off seasons, you know, fall to spring, that tends to be the best time for growth and learning and designing. So really, even when you're thinking that nothing is happening in your gardening, you know, um, there is, there's something, there's something that's happening inside that's helping you become that gardener. There's uh, dormant seeds that are in your, you know, land that are getting ready to bloom, you know, for the next year too. So, you know, our relationship is going to be all throughout all of the seasons, if that's something that you need. I like that because uh, it, it, it kind of sounds like you're saying your experience as a gardener can mimic the experience of the plants where at sometimes it's more, you know, reading and planning and designing and other times it's like a flurry of activity. So, you know, some is kind of more introspective and some is more sweating and digging. Totally. <laughs> so, yeah. Some exactly. of it's your mind, some of it's your actual sweat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I was thinking too, you know, like there's telemedicine now mm -hmm. and so <laughs> that's kind of cool because you know the things it used to be so hard right to to really bring somebody to some remote location and have them walk through the garden but you know you could you could do that with your phone walking around outside and and talking to someone so there could be a lot of different ways to do it so uh, i i think one of the things too is maybe don't limit yourself. I, I just got an email from this list I'm on and it says, you deserve to be helped. You do. Um, and it was like such a beautiful message, you know, cause like, do you, do you need to struggle through everything in your life? Or yeah. if there's things that are important, can you get a coach and as a wellness coach, like I, <laughs> my favorite fact is that Oprah has five coaches. Um, you know, and it's like people that really excel, they have a lot of coaches. They're, yeah. they're not doing it on their own. Any Olympian, it's not like 
oh, I'm really talented. I'm just going to go do what I think. It's like, no, you're going to have a bunch of coaches helping you with different aspects of it's your life. It's so important to just surround yourself with the people that can, you know, elevate your experience. Um, we almost idolize the like, by the bootstraps on our own, you know, self startup story, but behind every single one of those stories is somebody cheering them on. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's really important to just reach out and have that. And the garden is not any different from anything else. You know, if you right. want to learn how to play piano, if you want to learn how to play a sport, if you want to learn how to, you know, um, be more nutritional, you know, you hire people for all of those things. You hire people right. whose passion are going to really shine through and help, you know, cut through all of the muck. Like, yeah, you can do all the research for hours, but there's going to be conflicting information. You can find a correct answer to anything, anything to confirm your, you know, question that mm -hmm. it might not be right. So um, it's just really important to, you know, not limit yourself, not think like, I need to do this on my own because none right. of us need to be. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, um, you know, that's part of this whole Climate Action Homes community that we're doing and the idea we're doing the podcast, bringing you someone, but also doing our weekly networking meetings because we know each person has different perspectives and talents and insights and needs and that, you know, we can help each other. And, and I think that's what I found. And that's why I started Green Team Academy was it was this individualism is what is slowing us down. Yeah. And when we can be helping each other, figuring out all these different things, that's what's going to going to really propel us forward. Um, and so how about um, I we're going to wrap here in a couple minutes. Um, but I wanted to I wanted to ask you, what about as uh, I think that one of the things we talked about was how growing your own food is a climate action that you can reduce the travel time or, or the you know mileage of your food. You can um, be doing things right there in your community. Um, what are some of the other things that you would, mention about, you know, I think people sometimes like climate change, it's such a debilitating concept. It's pretty but broad. Climate action is more um, empowering. But I think, you know, to, to think about, wow, well, if we could start growing our food, that would be a positive step. How do you see that as a climate action? Um, I mean, you definitely hit some of the key factors, which is uh, reducing your carbon footprint of your food. Most food, you know, it uh, most of our salad greens, actually, in fact, 98% of them come from two different cities, one in California, one in Arizona. So even the carbon footprint of your food, of your lettuce, um, and that's so easy to grow here, you know? And so, so that's a big thing, but it's a little bit deeper than that too. You know, this conversation, the climate action conversation, the other impact is food diversity, right? It's super important. And so I, I encourage everyone to save and trade their own local seeds because that's going to really help our crops adapt to this rapid climate change. The more you harvest the food in your own climate, the better suited for it will be. So when you're growing and maintaining on your own little piece of the earth, no matter how small, the impacts are huge. They, you're literally impacting and changing the earth, right? The, the physical, actual earth, the soil health keeping pesticides off your food and patch of earth, you know, in a organic way and connecting you to all of this. So once you're connected to the plants them themselves and the resiliency of the plants themselves, um, you find that, you know, growing your own food, it's a skill that you can benefit from the rest of your life. And it just, it gives me so much joy that, you know, we can, we can share this because that adaptation, that diversity, that ability to just keep these seeds going and keeping, you know, the food literally in our hands, you know, the control of it. It's probably one of the most important things that you can do. And I guess that's why you're teaching these workshops. So let's mention the, the workshops that you have coming up. And if you're hearing this later, then just know that these are, that, these kinds of workshops are the things that Katrina does with different partners um, around around the state. 
Yeah, so um, you can always find out about upcoming events on my website, uh, gratefulgardenllc.com. And that's singular because we're talking about your garden. And uh, you can find me on Facebook as well. And so the first um, ones, I do have some workshops with the Green Valley Ranch HOA that they are sponsoring um, on February 19th and March 19th. It's the exact same workshop, just two different times where we're starting seeds and doing a seed swap and really teaching you that um, now, right now is actually the time to start not only planning your garden, but um, starting some seeds inside. And then the next one that we're doing is going to be, um, I'm pretty excited about it. You know, we're going to be with the Women in Sustainability is putting this one on and sponsoring that at the Modern Nomad. So you, know, you get to combine your seed starting with um, also a place where you can, you know, refill any of your products and, you know, work with your, you know, uh, you know, refillables and not have to do single use. So, um, so these are what we're doing now. We do them kind of all over um, seed starting workshops, seed saving workshops, seed swaps, seedling swaps, all these things that really just help you become a little bit more confident in what you're doing. I like too that, you know, that it is a workshop. It's not just because I'm, I'm not somebody that really has any gardening expertise. Um, and so, you know, the idea like, oh, okay, somebody's going to actually give you ideas about how to start seeds and how to do that, that kind of seed swap and how to save your seeds. Um, so, you know, not being embarrassed that you don't know those basics, but having somebody that you can work with um, and, and doing it in a group like the Women in Sustainability or the, the Green Valley HOA, which that probably is going to feed into your your farmer's market. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, so Green uh, Green Valley Ranch, the farmer's market, Grateful Garden LLC is so beyond thrilled and excited to be managing that. And so we just really want to have a space where our community can really connect. You know, the past couple of years, I think what, what a lot of us has realized is that, you know, we had to pick and choose wisely our connections and, and we miss that. We miss that community. And so for Grateful Garden to be managing the Green Valley Ranch, um, you know, farmer's market is just, I'm beyond thrilled. So if you want to get involved, if you want to, um, you know, be a vendor there, reach out um, to myself, you through my website, gratefulgardenllc.com. If you want to attend there, you know, we would love to see you each and every week. We plan on having some extra and new and exciting things along with some of the mainstays. So there's just going to be such an outpouring of love and community. And that's going to be on Wednesday nights uh, from June to August in Green Valley Ranch at the Rec Center. So that that is Denver. Um, for anyone listening outside of here, we're talking about Denver, Colorado. There's so much excitement around that. Um, one really cool thing is that Rose Thomas, who started it, went through the the Green Team Accelerator Lab that where I coached 20 teams um, with Green Team Academy in 2019. So that was really neat to, um, you know, she had already kind of started that as a, an idea, but took it up a notch by going through the Accelerator Lab. So it's really fun to see the next, I know that she then moved out of the area. So it was really cool to see you coming back in and uh, into that and taking it up a notch. It's a really beautiful spot because by the, so the beautiful. water there I and mean, amphitheater and music. Yeah. yeah. And I just love how small our world is too, right? You know, Rose <laughs> is totally my mentor and someone who I looked up to in the community. And when I asked her, like, what now? Like, who's going to do this? the fact that the answer was me, you know, I just, I felt <laughs> honored. I just, I've got big shoes to fill, but I know that I'm going to be supported by Rose and by yourself, Joan, and, and, and the community that we get to create together. And I just can't be more thrilled. Yeah. And so for anybody out there that's thinking, gosh, we don't have a farmer's market, you know, maybe the answer, maybe you're the one and maybe you can get yours going during the green team Academy 90 day challenge. Uh, that that kicks off in August or September. I mean, this this whole thing that if you are seeing something and it's making you a little crazy, you're probably the one to to do it, and and you don't have to do it alone. And in a similar way that that Katrina is saying, you know, I wished if that's what I did with the Climate Action Challenge, writing the book and starting the Green Team Academy is teaching people 
the best practices and you don't have to waste decades flailing around. We know how to do it now. Um, so you can, you can take these ideas and take them forward. All right. Well, I think we could just keep going. I know there's so many exciting things. Like I think, you know, one of the things that is something that we didn't really touch on, but I love, so the three pillars that I'm working under for this uh, or, or supported by maybe uh, for the climate action homes is people, planet, and prosperity. And, you know, my goal is to help people, like, not settle. Like, don't settle for a, something like, well, I know it destroys the planet, but it's what we can do right now. It's like, no, we don't need to do it that way. Or I know it's expensive, but, um, you know, like, if you do a food garden and it increases the value of your home, and it increases your mental health and your kids feel better and you feel better, um, you know, and it's it's helping the planet. You're doing, I don't know, you know, carbon sequestration by improving the soil or reducing the amount of trips to the store. Like there's, there's so many different benefits. And I think that that's the fun part, fun and creative part is that when we look for those, we can see them and then when we reach out to people like Katrina and some of our other guests, um, we'll be able to help you. So you don't have to go that alone. So yeah. awesome. Um, all right. I wanted to just mention really quick our upcoming, um, some of our upcoming events. So on, on February 14th, I'm going to be doing the real estate market trends from Denver one of the reasons I joined your castle real estate is because they're known for their data analytics. And so they have all these amazing graphs and uh, you can get that report every quarter. Um, but I'm going to actually walk you through some of those details. Like why are the prices like this? What's with the lack of inventory? It's really interesting to dive into that a little bit so that you, you know what is known and what's not you know, so so that you can make your decisions with more confidence about, you know, should I be waiting? Should I be buying, selling? Because um, we want you to be able to prosper and build that um, prosperity with your decisions about where you're living. Um, so that's on February 14th, February 21st. We have Carrie Martin Haley, who is the founder of Summit Sustainable Goods. So she's going to be talking about all the different products that they have that are their, you know, zero waste and eco-friendly um, solutions. So lots of really fun and interesting things that she'll be talking about. On the 28th, we have Chad Bergman, uh, who is with Movement Mortgage. He's going to be talking about the top things to know when buying um, a home in 2022. You've heard it's a little bit nutso out there and what people are having to do, how much competition. So we're going to dive into that and help you understand, you know, maybe you're not ready to buy yet. You're thinking of in a year or two. Now's a good time to start understanding what is going on, what things can you do to be prepared. Um, and then on March 7th, we will have the regenerative landscape design with Erin Joy Murphy. And that's going to be a fun one because she's talking more about if you want to go to native plants and pollinators and, you know, it's a really different take looking at a whole landscape. Um, so that'll be a fun conversation. And then we're also going to be uh, starting on March 16th, a home buying education series with, with Chad. And we're going to be bringing in some other folks um, over time. So that'll be more of a course type of thing rather than just a, a podcast. So um, if you go to the climateactionhomes.com, you can sign up and get access so that you can jump into our, our Zoom networking, which is what we're going to be doing right now. Uh, and before we do that, I just want to pop back over and say thank you so much, Katrina, for for sharing your your joy and creativity um, and your coaching with yeah. us and with people around the, the state and around the world. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And you know, I do want to just mention if, if you're not sure if this is for you, 
I do have a free 15 minute phone call where you can talk with me. We can see if we're a match. We can see if it's the road that you want to go down. You know, we really want to make sure that that that's what you're looking for. So uh, head on to the website, book that free 15 minute phone call and, you know, we'll go from there. Yeah, that's perfect. And I think, you know, have, doing that same kind of stuff myself, like you don't have to worry about wasting someone's time. You know, they they really want to talk to you. And if if you're thinking about it, even if you're like, I'm not really ready to do it, go ahead and make the call, get those ideas going uh, for yourself. And the same for me, if you're thinking about doing anything real estate wise, then then reach out and let's get the conversations going. All right. Okay. So thanks, Katrina. I really appreciate that. And um, thank you everybody for tuning in and we will be in touch soon. Okay. Thanks.